Warriors. Now, Warriors for the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we Warriors for the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we Warriors for the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. I say we Warriors for the ultimate fight. Get in the ring for the ultimate fight. One of the California boys coming out here, Johnny Ritchie. Who's he fighting? Yeah, he's Travis Robinson is stepping in here, taking on Jamie Boogie and Tone, uh, Mike. And what promises to be just a great fight. This Robinson kid, he's kind of off his rocker. He's just one of these guys that he doesn't care. He, he's like, look, I train as much as I can. It's not as much as I should. But that's not going to stop me from getting in here and pounding out uh, old Boogie tonight. These guys are cool to hang around. They're a lot of fun to be around. But Boogie says, you're going to see something beyond what you normally see tonight. I'm gonna do something spectacular, so strap yourselves in. Well to wait and hold bar, check it out. What kind of a fighter are you, man? If, if you were to tell us what to expect tomorrow, what, we'll give us a little preview of what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm good stand-up, and I'm good on the ground, so we'll see how it goes. Either way, I feel confident. Okay, man, send, send that Boogie a message. I don't know why you're gonna win. <laughs> it's gonna happen. All right, Boogie right there. Says it's gonna happen. Says his cardio's where it needs to be. Boogie, tell the people at home, what are you going to have to do to get inside that cage and get a win tomorrow? Uh, well, I don't think his conditioning's where it needs to be. I'll guarantee mine is, and uh, if he makes it out of the first round with my hands, then uh, we'll see what happens in the second. But, you know, grappling, jiu-jitsu, I've been training it all, so I'm ready for whatever he has to bring to the table, and uh, we'll give him a good test tomorrow. I don't think he needs to worry about Tommy Gun after next time because uh, I don't think he's going to make it out of tomorrow without a couple of injuries. So... All right, Boogie, send him a message, man. Oh, I'm going to win. I'm ready, and uh, I'm ready to, you know, put an ass beating down. So whatever it takes, man. All right, shake hands. Best of luck to both these guys inside the cage tomorrow. A couple potty mouths in their interviews there, Johnny. Jeez these guys Louise. are surly tonight. You'd think they'd be fighting, Mike. You would certainly think that. These oh. guys are, oh, well, I guess they are. I guess they are, Mike. <laughs> Travis Sandman Robinson, Johnny, he's a character, I'm telling you. A character with a star on his chest. Yeah, Mike, and I tell you what, that tattoo across the stomach is killing me. What does it say? Satan no, loves me. Does it me. say Sandman? What does it say? No, it oh, says Satan. Satan loves me. You know, and who's better to have on your side than Satan? Yeah, yeah, you got two contrast of styles here. Boogie's, yeah, Boogie's kind of a religious guy himself. Yeah, he's... But I think he's on the other end of the... the, on the other, yeah, on the other end of the spectrum there, Mike, when it comes <laughs> to all that old deal. But Jamie down there from the... the, the God's uh, country. Terry, God's country, yeah, Linden, where... God lives. <laughs> well, Lonnie Ponson, you're referee for this one, Mike. And uh, Jamie's the promise, just like you said, the fireworks tonight. He's going to get in here and put on a clinic. The prominent good versus evil battle. Let's see who can win it. Johnny, who do you think is going to win it? Oh, man. Well, I'm as much as Satan good. loves you, <laughs> I think uh, Jesus has been with Jamie in the in the gym training hard with him. So there you go. Uh, I don't know if we want to really start putting that much on it, man. We don't need any <laughs> lightning coming down. Sure, here. That's right. You're right, you're right. Speaking of lightning, look at those nice two shots from it by Jamie Anton. And we haven't seen him look this comfortable in the cage in quite some time. Well, Mike, and that's how <laughs> when Boogie finds his groove, there's not a tougher guy out there. And uh, if Boogie fights the way this kid trains, there's nobody going to beat him. Well, I, yeah, that's the thing. Boogie gets his groove and he's really hard to deal with. And well, I just see a level of confidence, an air of confidence about him tonight that I haven't seen in a while. Well, Mike, he threw a nice knee right there. Then he threw that trip uh, as, as uh, Travis was buckling over. And uh, now Travis finds himself on his back. And Boogie is going to systematically work it here, Mike. He, he doesn't want to submit this kid. He wants to pound him out. Well, look at him hipping down, making uh, his opponent bear his weight. Man, he's just doing all the right things. Boogie's, you know, isolating an arm here now. And, boy, I think that thing's on, Johnny. Oh, yeah, Mike. He's uh, got <laughs> it down by the hip. And he's really trying to crank this thing over. Oh, but he lets go what? of it. Satan can really make you endure some pain, apparently. <laughs> Well, he did right there, Mike, because uh, we've seen guys tap from that, and uh, Travis took it and said, that was your best. Huh, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. Well, uh, Jamie just kind of taking his time, looking for something else. You gave me an arm a minute ago, now I'm looking for something else. Well, Mike, uh, Travis uh, trying to pull him inside of his guard. Probably not a bad move here. As long as you let Jamie on that outside, he's going to do just that, throw those elbows, uh, look to isolate an arm, and uh, 
Well, Mike, he's going for it again here. Jamie kind of putting on a clinic tonight. I think he's, you know, he's going to set up an arm lock here. He's kind of acting like he's going after that far arm. Well, <laughs> maybe he didn't quite get it there. Well, Mike, and then now it's uh, it's bad news. Time. Bad news here for uh, the Sandman, uh, Travis Robeson. He's going to be eating some shots. And Buggy throwing some big ones to the body, and then that's it. Lonnie steps in and says enough's enough. Maybe right there he got a good taste of what hell's like. Pushes yeah. It's coming down. <laughs> <laughs> the fire and brimstone of Boogie's fists landing forth on uh, his forehead. So there you go. You know, and look, Boogie's not even breathing hard. He never is. The kid's in phenomenal shape. That was a great performance. These guys have a lot of mutual admiration. They're both tough fighters. Yeah, both tough know. fighters. Good no kids. No doubt about it. Um, Boogie came and did his thing tonight. Boogie put on a clinic tonight. Fireworks uh, were brought inside the cage, and you look good, buddy, and I think we got big things in the future for this kid. Right, Without Mike? Without question, my friend. Statewide Bell Bonds. If the devil made you do it, Statewide Bell Bonds will get you through it. <laughs> Trav, I know you wanted to win so damn bad. You talked about it. You were just fired up. You wanted to fight. You wanted to fight last night if we would have let you. But you had to wait a full 24 hours and you get in here, man. And you go against a, uh, a tough kid in Boogie Anton. The kids has experience. Something that you lack. But I think once you get it, man, you're going to be a tough SOB to deal with in this game. So what's next, man? Um, I'm actually probably going to start moving out here to start training. That was a great fight, great fighter. I mean, I really have a lot of respect for this guy. I love fighting in the cage, and uh, hopefully you guys will see me here again next month. Hey, man, we love having you. Your crew, you're welcome here anytime, man. Uh, I want to say thanks for being a part of the experience, and on behalf of Ultimate Combat Experience and their sponsors, Lace is going to bring over some gift, a gift bag that we have for you. So tonight you were good, my friend, but just not good enough. Is there anyone you need to thank? Um, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, helped me get here. My cornermen, Mickey, Nate, Blue, uh, my sparring partner, Pete, my family, and uh, the person who fought against me. Right on. Thanks for being a part of the experience. We'll see you soon. All right, man. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by the United States Army. Be Army strong. Log on to GoArmy.com. Boogie, you promised me no grappling until the second round. What happened? Uh, I don't know, but I beat his ass, so that's all that matters. Boogie, you broke a promise. You were going to beat his ass on your feet. Boogie is a stand-up fighter and has, and has done stand-up training for 20 years. A while, yeah. Yet he refuses to do it here in the cage. Hey, I did some. I threw some high kicks, threw some shots at him. Then I tackled him. Yeah, and then I beat him up, so it's good. It doesn't matter. As long as you're happy with it. And I can see that you were. I'm, I got to say, it, it feels good to me to see you come here and have a big uh, showing here at the East Center. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It feels really good. I've been waiting a long time to be in this uh, arena. I've been around for a few years now. I'm training real hard. I'm taking it real serious. And, you know, it's all about getting in here and doing the thing. So that's what I did. I just want to thank my family, my fans, all my friends who come support me. And uh, I got to tell my wife I love her and she sits home and waits for me to train. She's really good about that. I want to thank her and uh, everybody who came out to watch. You, and you can't beat that, and I got to tell you, every time I run into your mom at the show, I feel so guilty. She's looking at me like, you did it to him again, didn't you? You stuck him in there and met him do it again. Yeah, no one makes me do anything. I do this because I love it. Thank it's you. part of me inside. I think Mike Stidham in the show. And uh, my sponsors, Nutritional Sports Shop, down in Orm, Utah County, and uh, Rib City Grill. They got a new location in San Diego. Try them out. They do a lot for me. Thank you. Our sponsors want to say thank you. They got a big gift back for you. Great job tonight. Thank you. Johnny, it really does feel good to, to see Boogie do what he did tonight. Yeah, Boogie Mike, he's been a part of the Ultimate Combat Experience for such a long time. Finally, he gets to come to the East Center and he put on a clinic tonight, Mike. And Boogie Anton is a tough kid with big fights in the future for him. If there's any guy who's earned it, it's certainly him. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere. Uh, Travis Marks, kid that has dominated the lightweight division, moving now to the featherweight division. I'm excited to see what he can do there, but he's got his hands full tonight. Who's he fighting? Well, Mike, he's fighting Tim Moon coming all the way from Hawaii. The kid is a classic uh, jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner. He's good at what he does, but so is Travis Marks, man. When that kid gets in here, it's full steam ahead. So I think this fight is going to be made possibly fight of the night. I, I think Travis might lack in jiu-jitsu experience, but he makes up for it in wrestling experience and just sheer grittiness. Featherweight knows bar, check it out. As we mentioned, a great matchup here. Both these guys, their camps are very big on them and looking to see 
big things from them. You see that huh. Mad Wolf doing his uh, dance on his way into the cage. Yeah, Mike, uh, representing here, Mike, and uh, this kid, uh, he's listening to him and talking to him, talking to his corners. They say he's like, his mission is great, the kid's tougher than hell. No, and these guys don't throw compliments around very easily. This kid must be tough. First, probably hit him with a couple strikes. And then he's, he's a wrestler, he's gonna wanna shoot. He's gonna get trapped in my clinch and he's gonna get need to sleep. Well, I took the fight last minute. Um, the same day I got offered the fight, the same day my daughter was born and she died the same day. So I stuck it all in and I'm gonna let it all out in the cage tonight. He's a nice guy or whatever, but he's gonna pay for it. Cause that's what I do, I win. <laughs> I only, only lost once, that's my first fight. And ever since then, 11 fights later, undefeated, and it all finishes. That's a lot of baggage to be carrying. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, having a kid die on you like that and really carrying that type of anger sure. inside, could, I don't know if that gives you an advantage or if it just distracts you. Well, kind of a tragic thing there, Mike, but i tell you what, uh, Tim Moon, he, he does, he's the kind of kid that he is, he's gonna suck it up, and he's gonna let all that aggression out on Travis Marks. Uh, what led me here? Um, Obviously, just the opportunity to fight in the Ultimate Combat Experience. I love, I love fighting for this show. Uh, you guys always treat me well, and and so any opportunity to fight on this card, um, especially at the E Center, this this is a great venue for me. So, um, how this fight's gonna go? Kind of like all the rest of mine. I'm definitely a ground and pound guy, and that's what I plan on doing. At some point, it'll go to the ground. Hopefully, it's before my eyes get beat and swollen, and it'll go to the ground, and I'll end it there. But because there's only one winner, it's gonna be me. What a great kid, John Rich. I just, yeah. I, you can't help but love Travis Marks. You get around him, that smile's infectious. He's just a great guy, but man, is he a different guy when he sets oh the cage or what? <laughs> He's the kind of guy, Mike, that give you the shirt off his back, he give you his last dollar, but he's up inside the cage, Mike, and he is going to make you pay. He's going to make you pay. <laughs> what a great matchup this is here, folks. I am very excited about this one. Tim Moon, obviously, much taller than Travis Marks. Yeah, I talked about Travis coming in. He said he's going to get him in the clinch and throw some knees. Uh, easier said than done when you got Travis Marks uh, rushing in there I'll like that, but Tim doing a good job. Marks got in deep on that shot, and Moon did a great job of stuffing that takedown. Boy, I was really impressed with that. <laughs> Travis having to leave his feet to try to, to try to <laughs> Travis with that punch, or yeah. Tim with that punch. <laughs> well, then he uh, goes in right there, Mike, at a classic single leg here. He's going to try to uh, run the pipe here, possibly. Oh, right there to his butt, and uh, this is where Travis wants his fight to be. Well, I tell you, I was a little surprised at how easily Moon went down that time as opposed to the other time. Uh, he had great defense the first time, and that time he just kind of seemed to give it up, maybe looking for a submission or something. Well, yeah, Mike, you see him right there still working on the left arm of Travis Marks. He hasn't let that thing go, and Travis has made him pay for it by landing some shots to the body there. Yeah, sometimes you go after an arm, and you're just going to take a beating for it, and right there, Travis Marks certainly made him pay, no doubt about it. Well, Mike, uh, Travis Marks, it looks like he's in the half guard. You know he's going to be working uh, to get full mount here, but you see Tim doing a pretty good job with that foot, f uh, with his feet, uh, doing some good footwork there, keeping that one leg isolated and not able to, to uh, come out of there. Interesting battle here, Johnny. Uh, Moon doing a good job of fighting, as you mentioned, from underneath there and kind of creeping up the cage just a little bit, trying to work out from underneath. And, boy, you uh, know, Travis Marsh sensing that he was trying to pull guard and, and uh, thwarted that effort. Uh, really, really interesting back and forth match. Yeah, Mike, it is. Uh, you see the right arm of Tim Moon was on the mat right there, and Travis pinned it down, put his knee on it, threw a couple shots, and they landed him. But oh, wow. Tim Moon, nice. That was slick. Very nice stuff. And you see how long he is, Johnny. You can see he's got a dangerous guard. There's no doubt about it. I think he's going to uh, be able to work up the body here. But Travis Marsh says, I'll just punch right through it. Yeah. Well, you're going to try to submit me, man. You better... Uh, you better bring your A game, because I am going to land those shots, and I will uh, beat you out of submission. And Travis is notorious for doing that. What man. a great shot that was right there. You saw Travis kind of posturing up and then dropping those elbows, as you mentioned earlier in the show. Very nice work uh, by Travis Marks on the inside there. Well, Travis Marks likes this position, Mike. He's got him against the cage. Uh, you know, there's, he can kind of command that separation when he needs to throw those shots. Uh, Tim Doon trying to do his best at keeping Travis, uh, you know, close. But Travis doing a great job with those elbows and well, creating I, that space. I would feel a lot more comfortable for Travis if he if he passed guard first just because, look at this right here. You see, Moon is so long and he's dangerous. He looks like he's got a dangerous guard. But Travis, he, that's what he does. He just beats you up. Yeah, he beats you up. I know that. You can see yeah, Moon is frustrated here, Mike, even though he is working that guard. Hard, not really much he can do with his back up against that fence right there, but uh, he's trying to slowly work his way toward the center of that cage. Well, you know, and Travis has just been relentless with those shots. He hasn't thrown a couple and then stopped and given the opportunity to Tim to really grab on anything. Those punches are, 
are nonstop and they're relentless and, and therefore they're kind of difficult to try to trap like that. Now my guy there uh, gets enough separation to throw five or six shots and finishes it up with an elbow. And uh, Tim's still looking, though, Mike, and then we've seen guys get caught from this position. Well, the more he looks, the more he gets caught, man. He's looking at fists raining down is what's happening there. Travis Marks, with a very impressive first round, came out with uh, just a flurry of punches and really made <laughs> Tim Moon uh, suffer from underneath. Well, Mike, that's what Travis Marks does. Travis Marks talked about getting to the ground and doing some ground and pound. Maybe uh, Tim's going to switch up a strategy here and try to work his hands and his well, feet. You can't fight like that unless you're in tremendous shape. And you see Travis Ooh. Marks is in tremendous shape. He's barely huffing and puffing just a little bit, and he was nonstop in that first round. Oh, yeah, Mike. I mean, the kid, <laughs> you know, talking to him, he runs every single day. He's at the gym twice a day. You know, when he's not with his family, he's at the gym. So you know he's working out and doing the right things to win. Well, absolutely. And, and whatever punches Travis oh! <laughs> Wow, I was just about to say whatever punches Travis throws on his feet is to set up the takedown, but he landed that one and knocked Tim Moon over. Now he got looks like a power halfer cranking that neck over. Uh, if he can get this thing, he could really roll. Yeah, just like that. Roll Tim onto his back now, Mike. We're going to see some... Uh, Boy, Tim some... Moon is probably still seeing stars. That thing just connected right on the button, and I haven't seen Tim Moon do a whole lot other than just kind of try to regain his composure. <laughs> he's in survival mode now without a doubt, uh, but Travis Marks, is not, he's not going to give you a break. He's going to, you know, he sensed that, and he went right after Tim. Now he's in the side now, and he's throwing those elbows and those forearms down and doing everything that he should to pull out the victory. You know, and he's not getting reckless either. He's not trying to finish this thing too fast. He's on top here looking for opportunities, uh, but he's making you pay with every second. He's hitting you with a shoulder or an elbow or something. Yeah, Mike, and he did right there. He uh, had his arm over the neck there, and he threw that shoulder right into the face of, uh, oh, of a Tim Moon, and that's that. He's looking to slice him up with those elbows, too, really landing those nicely right across the forehead. Didn't quite get the cut he was looking for, but they certainly did their damage. Yeah, they did, Mike, and now he's uh, going to work him toward the center, which is kind of weird for Travis. He really likes to use that cage, but uh, I think that he knows that he's in such a good position, and he's got Tim so rattled that he could pretty much do what he wants. You can look into Tim's eyes, and he's, you know, he's really struggling still, so, uh, you know, I, 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 honestly, I I think Travis, all he needs to do is sit up and, and drop a barrage of punches or elbows, and this fight will be stopped. Oh, yeah, Mike. And no, if he can get this full mount, Mike, I think that's exactly uh, what he is going to do. You see him working and working, but Tim's still doing a pretty good job fighting from his back, uh, keeping that leg up, not letting Travis get that full mount because he knows what's going to happen if he How does. How much heart do these guys have that come out from Hawaii with uh, <laughs> the Shogun MMA? These guys are all just tough kids, and, and they're not going to roll over for no. him at all. He got caught with a shot that I think most people, that would have been the end of the fight. This kid really has battled well since then, uh, even with Travis March just really pushing the pressure. Well, Mike, this kid's, uh, you know, he's got a lot of pride. He's proud of his record. Uh, you know, he lost his first fight. He's been undefeated since, and uh, you know, he's proud of that. And to step up and, and fight Travis Marks, that says a lot. Well, yeah, and let's keep in mind, that was a brown belt hanging around his shoulder in that way in there. I mean, he's obviously no bum. Uh, he's been around the jiu-jitsu game for just a little bit here, doing a great job. Somehow, he's gotten out from underneath and now has Travis Marks in just a little bit of trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mike, now he's sinking and looking for this takedown, but Travis doing a great job. He's throwing the wizard in there, uh, throwing punches from underneath. Looking good, Mike, looking good. Well, looking good, but I, I've got to really take my hat off to this Tim Moon. What a great, gritty performance that, that, that we've seen from him. After getting nailed with that big shot, he has come back and survived to finish off round number two and definitely making Travis Marks earn what he's uh, trying to Get here today. Oh, yeah, Mike Travis Marks has had to walk and fight through this whole thing here, and he's doing it. You see, he's a little bit out of shape, not out of shape, but he's he's a little bit uh, winded, Mike, because he was throwing punches the whole time. He hasn't stopped literally for six minutes. He hasn't stopped throwing punches or elbows or strikes in some fashion, and uh, you know, obviously a dominant performance. But uh, let's see, uh, maybe I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like maybe the corner they might be throwing in the towel. Oh, he there, yeah. Tim cannot continue well, there, that's Mike. That's understandably so. That might be a good stoppage for him because really it was just gonna get worse. I think it was uh, Travis Marks uh, doing what the T train does, and that's rolling into town and rolling right over people. Well, I tell you what, though, once again, I can't say this enough how impressed I am with that Tim Moon. Came out and gave a game performance, but Travis T train Marks, as you mentioned, he is the man to beat in the featherweight division. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. I want to say uh, on behalf of the Ultimate Combat Experience tonight, you were good, but just not good enough. But still, uh, Sarah's going to bring over a gift bag that you've got from all of our fine sponsors. So, hey, uh, thanks for being a part of the experience, man. What's next? Uh, like come back at 155. Hey, okay, come back at 155. We're going to hold you to it. Thanks a lot, man. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Skull Candy. For all the hottest gear for your MP3 player, log on to SchoolCandy.com.
T-Train did what T-Train does today, man. He wrecks people. You look good. You look back like T-Train of old. I remember back in the day when he just wrecked people and looked great tonight. Thank you. I, I've been working. Obviously, I've got a long ways to go, but it's coming. It's obvious that you've been working. I mean, really, it's showing. You used to just beat people up by just being stronger up here. Now you're stronger up here, and you've got the skills to uh, cover the rest. Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate you letting me fight your show. Uh, this is a great venue, and I appreciate it very much. Are you kidding me, man? Thank you so much for being here. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you to everybody that come to support every, every fighter, not just me. But I have to really thank my fans, my friends, my family. I love them all. There's great support, and I have some awesome sponsors that have made this possible. There is a reason why there are about 200 people here to see this kid. He's a great guy, just period, top to bottom, great guy. And I want to say thank you so much. Who, who are your sponsors? Um, ISG, that's Ink Screen Graphics out of Spanish Fork. They did all my shirts, donated them for me. I have All Star Electric out of my hometown, Roosevelt, Utah. Got to support them. Um, Kaufman Painting. Um, Coventry Mortgage and uh, Warm Zone all sponsor me and help me get here tonight and make it worth my time. And all the people he got to pull over and write tickets to, you got to say, say thanks to them as well. I appreciate y'all for getting pulled over by me. <laughs> Johnny, I got to tell you, man, anytime T Train is on the card, you can expect a lively crowd, and he, he brought it to him tonight. He did, Mike. Uh, Travis Marks, once again, is one of our toughest fighters. It's going to be hard pressed to find this kid matches because he rises to the occasion each and every time. Travis Marks, man, my hat's off to you, brother. You are one tough dude. It was hard to find him opponents. We had to work very hard to get him a matchup tonight, and Tim Moon stepped up, came out here, and did it. I hope we see that kid again. I think we will, Mike. He's got a good attitude, a good head for the sport. Wants to come back at 155, and we'd be much, we, we, we'd get him a fight anytime. And I think he's got a crush on a couple of our dancer girls over there, too, so we might just see him. We got more of those for the combat dunk going on. In your light heavyweight division, this is an actual light heavyweight championship match. Walter Harji's been wrecking people to Puna Tomalolo. Kind of got here by the good graces of some people that got hurt and weren't able to be here, but he certainly deserves to be here. Yeah, both these guys are so tough. Walter Harji is just a phenomenal athlete, Mike. The kid is great. He's been dominating the competition, but I think he's going to have his hands full tonight. I think Lolo is going to be his toughest test to date. Well, let's get it going then. Light heavyweight nose bar, check it out. Both of these guys have been very impressive anytime they've stepped inside our cage. Walter Harji never having lost thus far, and all of his performance have been extremely dominating. Oh, he has, Mike. He gets in there, shoots right in, gets guys to the ground, and just pounds, pounds him out, Mike. No, no, he's just a ground and pound. He's a knucklehead. tough son of a gun, no doubt about it. Five foot ten, 202 pounds. He's the big dub. I'm really excited about this fight. Uh, as I was saying last night, this guy's a wrestler. We both love the ground. You know, we both love getting down there, getting dirty with it. So uh, it's, he looks like he's in good shape. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good fight because I want it. Looks like he wants it. I, I love the guy. He seems great, but uh, I'm, I want it. That's it. Kind of interesting how he's sizing old Tapuna up, man. Uh, it's checked out his condition. Looks pretty strong. Looks like he can wrestle. And uh, Tapuna, he's, they call him last call because why, Johnny? Oh, Mike, because he's at the bar till last call. He's the last guy to leave the bar, folks. Six foot tall, 205 pounds. Last call. Uh, Walter's a great guy, you know, uh, got to meet with him a little bit before the weigh-ins, everything else like that, but, uh, you know, when the cage closed, he's going to be trying to hurt me, I'm going to try to hurt him, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to come down to who made the best man win, and I believe that'll be me. Well, they stole each other's speeches, Johnny. Yeah, Mike, these guys look so much alike, they could be brothers over here. Or the brown brother and the white brother. Well, that's okay. They talk the same, they all have the same responses. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're going to have fun before, have fun after, we're going to beat each other up during. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Uh, wow, uh, see Walter Harji, this is how he does it, Mike, just get after it. He did not mess around, he came out right out at Tafuna, and boy, Tafuna might have been caught up. Caught oh, up. oh, looks maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he might have dinged him in the ding-ding. And all that excitement, too. Mike, he threw a big knee there, and I think he caught uh, last call last in call the last right call. The, yeah. <laughs> I oh, think well. Might have been up on the belly button. Maybe up on the belly button there, Mike. I'm not sure, but uh, Who knows? either way, they'll get back after it. Well, yeah, they're, they're going to take a little break here and uh, recuperate just a little bit. And here we Shake go. Him out. Shake him out. Shake him out. Still ready to rock and roll. Watch those knees. Watch those knees. I think he knows, Lolo. <laughs> last call. 
Oh, big right hand over the top there, and uh, <laughs> nice takedown to follow Walter Harchi doing what Walter Harchi does. Yeah, Mike, and this is, might be a bad spot for Lolo. Lolo is a pretty good verse on the ground, but uh, Walter Harchi just keeps things going. He presses the action. Oh, now he's in full mount here, Mike, and this could be bad this for uh, last call. Really surprising for me. Wow, Tafuna able to get out from underneath. I think Walter got a little excited. Yeah. You mentioned earlier how uh, Travis Marks really took his time when he felt like he'd hurt his opponent right there. You see just the opposite. Walter Harchi got a little too excited. And as a result, he's on the bottom. Yeah, he's on the bottom here, Mike. Uh, he, he'll even tell you his submission game isn't that great. You know, he knows just enough to uh, maybe catch an arm bar, maybe catch a triangle, but uh, he just likes to ground and pound and beat people up. Well, boy, these guys are uh, giving Christmas gifts left and right because Tabuna Tomalolo had position and, and just gave it up to Walter Hartje now, and Walter finds himself up on top. <laughs> Walter doing a little power move right there. They reached inside the, the back of the, little, the last call's leg, lifted him up, and dropped him to his back. Mike, this thing's back and forth. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's really, a, this is one that's almost impossible to score because both these guys are, well, they, you see a lot of flashes of brilliance, and then you see things that, well, you wouldn't expect that either one of these guys. Well, you see Phil Henderson, Mike, in the front row telling Lolo, assuring him oh, to go to the bar. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, that was his elbow. He's in a lot of pain there, Johnny. There it is, it's Mike. dislocated. dislocated. Man, ah, that's ugly. That is ugly. Yeah, that's dislocated there, Mike. Wow. Um, Boy, that thing was just went on fast, man. It just went on so fast. And you see right there, Walter Hart is uh, in a lot of pain. Uh, the Funatomolo doesn't feel good about that, no, Johnny. No, he doesn't like to hurt people, Mike. And uh, this is going to eat it. And he, he's feeling real bad about that he, right now. He but. doesn't come out there here to hurt people. As you heard him say earlier, they kind of wanted to hang out after. Well, not going to happen tonight. Hard 8 Power Sports. UCE fans mention this ad and receive a free helmet with any ATV purchase. Uh, what happened right there, man? Uh, you know, his aggressiveness completely caught me by surprise. Um, I'm really sorry about the aftermath. Walter's a great guy. Uh, I've talked to him pretty much for the past two days. Instead of a friend, I'm really sorry things didn't go the way they did. Uh, I had the submission on, and the way he came at me, you know, there's no quit in people like that. So I've, I've had submissions on people where they didn't tap out. So. Uh, well, no, and that's the thing, and, and I think Walter's going to be fine. I can tell you that right now. You stepped in here, you did your thing. Congratulations. I just want to thank all my sponsors, Global Market Alliance, uh, Ron Israelson of Wiz, Western Interior Specialist, and uh, everyone down at Ultimate Combat, Global Marketing Alliance, Phil Henderson, uh, Mike, Johnny the, Ritchie. The crew. No, hey, man, listen, you're, you're a great kid. Uh, I can't wait to see you come back in here. Thanks for being a part of it, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's just one of the cold, hard realities of this sport. I, I hate to say that. I mean, really, um, Walter's okay. I mean, it, it, he's in a lot of pain. He's in a lot of pain right now. But, you know, those that's a serious injury. His arm was, his, you know, it was it was his elbow. His elbow's dis disconnected, and it doesn't look pretty. But I tell you, I, you know, he's, he's a tough kid. He's a resilient kid, and he'll be back. I mean, he'll be okay. I think he will be, Mike. You know, it is an inherently dangerous sport. You never want to see anybody leave the cage like that. But I tell you what. We'll see Walter come through that thing with just as much excitement the next time he fights. You're not going to be able to stop a kid like that with just a little injury like and that. And believe me, nobody feels worse right now than Tafuna Tomalola, man. He's just literally almost in tears. Uh, you know, hey, he'll be all right. We'll keep you guys updated as the night goes on. We'll let you know how Wally's doing. Uh, we'll be thinking about you, man. We got more of the ultimate combat going on. First of all, it has been a long time since we've seen this cat come out here. Night Creeper Lima Pule used to be a fixture of the Ultimate Combat. He's back here to make a statement. Who's he fighting tonight? Oh, well, Mike, he's fighting a very game, very tough competitor in the butcher, Corey Loftus. Brought a few people with him tonight, and uh, he's here to make a statement that I am the heavyweight champ. Heavyweight, no holds barred. Check it out. Uh, tomorrow night, it's the finals, man. It's the big dance. Tell me, are you ready to rock and roll tomorrow night inside the cage? More than ever. More than ever. Tell, tell, tell us, what are you going to have to do to get a win tomorrow when you, when you uh, come down and fight for the Ultimate Combat Experience? I'm just going to have to give it everything I've got. Looks like a tough kid, so uh, I'm going to give him everything I've got. All right, man. Corey, we're right, send him a message. Let him know why you're going to win. I want it more. There you go. All right, no love. Lima Pule back in action. You're here. You made it. You made it. You're a little late, but you're here. Lima, tell us, man. Uh, what's happening with you? What are you going to have to do tomorrow to step inside that cage and beat Corey Loftus? Oh, uh, man, it's just official, and I want it too. You know what I mean? Just like you want it. You know, it go down, I'll go down. You know, one winner, whatever. But hey, 
I've been working too, you know what I mean? Oh, wait, like, you've been working out a lot, so I've been eating a lot of cows and, and horses, so but I've, been, I've been eating a lot of farm animals too. So, you know, I'm hungry also. <laughs> Leave a, send him a message, man. Let him know why you're walking out of this thing with the victory. I want it too, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm representing 801, always been here from the get. Represent, regulating foods, putting foods down, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? Staying beat up from my feet up, doing the damn thing, you know what I mean? So, whatever, it go down, go down, you know what I mean? I, I stay, stay right here, everybody know. Okay, right there, you see the clash of styles in these guys? You know what it is. Okay, shake hands, and best of luck to Corey Loftus and Lima Pule. DV Wonder meets 50 Cent. <laughs> <laughs> I just called to put a cap in your ass, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. Lima Poulet is without a doubt my favorite character in this show. Oh. But, man, does he have his hands full tonight, Johnny, or what? Oh, he does, Mike. Uh, Corey Loftus, I, I think combined, his fights have all lasted about a minute. Uh, he gets in here and he just pounds his opponents up. He I, rushes actually, him, gets him, and wins. He's won quick and he's won long. He had a real tough match with Paul Olsen. Oh, that's now. right. That's but, right. Uh, Lima Poulet, he's just making his way to the cage. When he gets there, he gets there. Yeah, Mike, and that's no doubt about that, Mike. Uh, Lima talked about representing, and uh, he has. He's been with the show for a long, long time. Uh, fought the toughest that uh, we've had to put up against him, Mike, and he's done very well against those guys. He just, he, he enjoys what he does. He loves this more than anybody, I think. I think that's what I love about him. He just loves to fight. He huh. loves it. <laughs> Lonnie Foster's scolding him for something. Lima, you do as you're told. Lonnie will beat you up. Yeah, well, that's Lonnie will you grab you tight. Yeah, no kidding. All right, here. But uh, uh, you can expect at home, folks, to see big uh, punches, big shots, uh, just like that. Just, just bombs being thrown inside the cage. Lima, and I don't know how people don't see it coming, because that right hand, it loops over the top and he throws it, but it's just so hard to defend. Yeah, and you see he's, uh, he's like, so Corey's been, landed a couple shots, but man, there's a lot of power behind Lima's punches. And when he hits, even though uh, Corey's blocking it, Mike, it still knocks him back a few steps. I'll tell you what, though, Corey's come out really looking good to begin with. And, well, we expected to see that out of Corey, uh, the, the takedown, Lima Pule winding up on top. Yeah, Lima Pule winding up on top, Mike. And uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of... Uh, uh, you know, submission from this guy. Lima Pule likes to win and by, by doing one thing only, and that's making you tap or, or knocking you out. I don't think Lima Pule knows how to put a submission on. Yeah. I, he can defend him all day long. He And I don't even know that he knows how to defend him. He just instinctively rips his arm out of places that it shouldn't be you know, ripped out of, you know. But uh, oh, yeah. Lima Pule is not going to submit you. I'll guarantee you that. No, Mike. But uh, he's going to press the action. You know, this guy... Uh, for you know, he, he talked about his training regimen and what he's doing. But Mike, this guy, he is one of the few big guys that can go all three rounds and and be ready to rock and roll for a fourth if we needed him. Johnny, he's nonstop. When you talk to the guy, he's hopping around. The kid just is in great shape because he's constantly doing cardio. Yeah, and uh, throwing some punches right down there on top of court. And this is a lot of guy. This is a lot of man to be pressed up against here, and a lot of power. It's not like Lima is just his body. You see, the kid is big. Strong, I should heavy say one. doing cardio and then that green leafy substance you see on his shoulder there. Oh, that isn't that green tea? It might be. I think it's green tea, Mike. That is the secret to a long Lima's life. success. Longer life. <laughs> green tea. <laughs> well, Lima will tell you that anyways, Mike. Oh, but what do we got here? We're not really sure what we've got here, Johnny. But and this Corey's is what, got an arm kind of in a weird what, spot here. Well, now he's looking at an ankle lock, and this is what you expect when Lima fights. He winds up in weird positions, and look at that. He's actually doing a little crank on the ankle, too. Corey Lops is in pain. Yeah, Mike, he is. Oh, look at oh. Lima. He's threw, he threw it on. He did, but just let it go, man. Just about <laughs> had that. Done. Look at him T-rapping, Johnny. He's T-rapping. Who knew? We said we'd never see a, a submission from Lima, but he's been watching TV. He's been doing something, Mike. Maybe taking a little secret one-on-one -on -one privates from Mike Colby or something, but something. that guy's trying to throw on an ankle lock here, and uh, Corey's content <laughs> to play the drums on his butt. There he's, he's punching him right in the butt, that's for sure. <laughs> well, if oh, Lima knew a knee bar, he would have had it. It was on, it was over, but uh, didn't quite get it. Now he finds himself up on top. And Uh-oh. Yeah, Corey, you don't want to be here, buddy. Yeah, you don't want this to happen, and uh, we've been doing a pretty good job, Mike, of, of staying with position there as uh, uh Corey, who started to roll, Lima just kind of let him do it. Now he's kind of working something here. He's looking for something, Johnny. He knows he saw this somewhere, and he's going to do it. 
He's going to do it? No, no, no he's not going to not enough time. <laughs> you know but he winds up in the full mount, Mike, throwing well, submissions. How do you score that first round? <laughs> I mean, that's one of those back-and-forth seesaw battles that was a great match, but tough one to score. Tough one to score, Mike. I don't know. I think Liam at the end there with full mount position, working some kind of submission. Uh, maybe stole it. Maybe stole that round. Perhaps he just very well may have. And that's the difference in a close round. Some often comes down to who winds up on top and who winds up in, in position. Uh, right here, let's get something going early in the round. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Corey Loftus uh, throwing some punches. Mike, that landed on the side of Lima's head. So Lima's going to crowd him and put him against the fence. And wouldn't be surprised to see another Lima takedown here. I'll tell you what. We haven't seen Corey Loftus be able to be taken down prior to tonight. No, and, no. Uh, Lima's getting in real deep, getting those hips, and uh, doing a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, Mike, and while he's under there, he's going to throw punches, too. And you see Corey possibly looking for a front choke there. But uh, Lima's not going to give you that. He's going to lift that leg up and dump you on your back. I think Corey's a little bit skittish about getting hit in the groin because he sure seemed to flinch a lot when... Lima would punch to the midsection there. He really does have this on tight. Lima can't get his head out. Oh, but there's Lima right there. He does what he does, Mike, and finds a way out. Oh, but then Loftus lands a really big knee. Wow, good uh, exchange here. And I think Lima might have got hurt by that knee. That thing was on, it landed pretty solid. It landed pretty flush. Uh, now Lima has one knee on the mat, and uh, Corey doing a pretty good job. Oh, throwing those nice elbows from right there, Mike. Certainly is. You know, and this is one of those touchy spots with the Utah uh -oh. rule. Can you stand and strike? And were they standing? Were they down? Which were they? Well, yeah, I, I would say they're down there, Mike. <laughs> but I don't know. They are now, and uh, now. Corey Loft is doing some damage. You see his team right there in the corner, Team Monson, giving uh, Corey some instruction. Now it's time for you to turn this thing on. But I tell you what, if you don't have it on perfect, you're not going to tap Lima from a move like that. There's We've just no way. seen jujitsu uh, experts put arm locks on Lima, and Lima just kind of yawned his way through it. I mean, it hurt. His arm was bowed, but he wasn't going to tap. No, 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 not Lima. There's no way. This kid's got too much. Uh, pride and <laughs> to uh, tap from something like that. He almost to a fault, Mike, because he'll let that thing probably snap in three different directions before he uh, puts uh, the tap on. He certainly would, you know, and, and uh, right there you see what Lima does. He just scrambles well. Right there, a knee to the head. That's illegal. Lonnie Foster stepping in to say, hey, are you okay under there? And uh, Corey says, yeah, I'm fine. A little blood <laughs> out of the nose, but that wasn't from the knee. I'm good. Well, I tell you what, man, that was good sportsmanship on Corey's part, not trying to make a bigger deal over that than it was. Oh, he really could have played that thing up, Mike, and if we've he wanted to. We've seen guys to. do that, especially when they get tired. But uh, Lima did throw an illegal strike. Lonnie Foster warned him from it. I don't think a point was taken away. But uh, hopefully he doesn't do it again. Yeah, I don't think he'll do it again, Mike. He threw one to the body there. I think he's <laughs> Lima's learned his lesson. Oh, but now bad spot for Corey Loftus, Mike. This is exactly where we were in the first round. Lima ends up at full mount, Mike, and uh, you know he's not looking for a submission. Well, we said that before, but then he was, but then <laughs> yeah. he did. So Well, you know, uh, Corey Loftus is doing a good job of making things difficult for him. But, you know, Corey Loftus had a great first half of the round once again. Now Lima winds up in position, and, and you know, uh, it, it makes it tough again for a judge to give you a score if you wind up on bottom. Yeah, yeah. And especially if Lima could flurry out and throw some punches here and throw some elbows. Uh, with only a few seconds left, Mike, he's gonna, he needs to really take advantage of this. I'll tell you what, though. I give this second round to Loftus because he did win the majority of the round. Lima winding up on top. He didn't do anything once he sure, got there. Sure. He just kind of hung on. So, uh, round a piece, would you say, Johnny? I, I, I'm i going to agree with you there, Mike. I think so. I think that... Uh, well, once again, folks, very unofficial scorecard. I see it one round a piece, but both of these rounds could have gone either way. Round three when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, we're just hanging out here at the East Center watching two heavyweights beat the tar out of one another. Yeah. Johnny Ritchie, upcoming here is round number three of three, and literally rounds one and two could have gone either way. Oh, yeah, you're right, Mike. Uh, this is round three of a solid uh, war in this main event matchup between uh, Corey Loftus there with the black and yellow and Lima. Well, no love, Pule, with there in the black. The question remaining here is who wants it more? And <laughs> Lima Pule showboating a little bit, and Corey Loftus is uh, happy to reach up and punch him in the mouth for it. Yeah, and Lima. <laughs> but there's that kick that Lima throws out there, and it throws a big right that uh, landed uh, uh, on Corey Loftus. But Corey Loftus throwing a couple jabs, uh, looking to circle, possibly get Lima against that fence. This is where Lima can get dangerous. If you let him get a rhythm, he becomes very dangerous, I, I think. If you stand out toe to toe with him, he can hurt you. Yeah, and no, yeah, no doubt about it. Knock you right out of your uh, shorts there, Mike. But uh, kind of a lazy take down there, but he That's gets it. fatigue setting in there right there, boy. Lima just kind of pulled him down, and Loftus not able to defend. Looking for that key lock once again, but uh, once we mentioned this several times, Lima's very difficult to lock on, on things like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> without a doubt, Mike, without a doubt. This uh, fight putting you to sleep, Johnny? No, Mike, no, I'm sorry. Gosh, it, actually, it's not. This, this is uh, an exciting main event here. Uh, 
But, geez, I'd like to see a little bit more action. Sam these guys up. Come on. <laughs> Let's see this again with a big bang here, Mike. You know, and I, I agree with you for one simple reason is that Lima's not going to submit you. No, uh, no. So, you know, no. to see him isolating this arm and stuff right here, that really doesn't mean a whole lot. Because yeah. Lima's not going to yeah. sit back into an arm lock with it. No, Mike, he's not. But then right there, Wong, you see him throw that big looping left from the ground. And I tell you, not a lot of guys can move a 240-pound guy with just a punch from the ground. You know, and Lima can do it right there. He landed that thing and shifted Corey's whole body over. Well, when you've got a kid in mount position, too, it's kind of hard to stop a fight. It's a dominant position. Yeah. And unless absolutely nothing is going on, you kind of let him continue because he's earned that position. Yeah, Mike. Well, he's doing a pretty good job right there. He's got the knee up, and uh, he's throwing shots to the body, throwing shots to the head. Uh, Corey is on his back. You know, Corey's corner telling him, work, work, work. But yeah, it's easier said than done when you got Lima Nola Poulet on top of you. Uh, without a doubt. And I think this what had to happen was somebody had to be dominant here in this third round because the first two rounds were so close. This could be the scale tipper right here, the fact that Lima's been able to achieve position early and maintain it and just really – uh, punish Corey Loftus for the, the entire round. Yeah, Mike, throwing big shots to the body. I've uh, been throwing one to the head right there. He's throwing some nice elbows and forearms from underneath. And, uh, yeah, Mike, he's in full mount. I mean, Corey Loftus couldn't be in a worse position uh, with no love on top of him. But keep in mind, it's the 10-point must system. If judges saw Corey Loftus winning rounds one and two, he could very easily walk away with a victory here. Sure. Uh, you know, and, and, but, well, right here, he might even things out. No, oh. Not quite. Oh, Mike, he tried real hard, but Lehman doing a pretty good job of settling his hips and uh, dispersing his weight properly so that Corey couldn't roll him over. And now he's going to set up and throw those bombs. And factor in the fact that uh, Corey Loftus is pretty tired. I mean, he's, oh, for he's sure. fought really hard here. Uh, but Lima Poulet going to come away with a victory here in the third round. But really, it's going to go to the judges' scorecards here. And really, it's anybody's guess. Anybody's guess. Great fight between these two guys, Mike. They laid, it, they laid it all out there. You know, it's not very often you see the big boys uh, getting after it and fighting three hard <laughs> rounds. But they did. Uh, they tried helping each other up, and then they said, you're it. So you're on yeah, your own. you're on your own, dude. <laughs> Every man for himself. Yeah. But I can't yeah. pick you up. <laughs> you see old Monson there. He's proud of his boy. He came out and did a great job, represented well. I'm proud of both these guys. Let's listen in on the judges. Johnny Richie. Yeah. No love Lima Pule coming over with a big win, but boy, that was not an easy win. Oh, with that, no, it wasn't, Mike. Corey Loftus, we know that kid's going to be back, Mike. This thing's going to be eating at him. He's going to be training hard. Lima, he's going to have a picture of your face on his wall. He's coming for you. <laughs> Lima likes his picture up places, like at the post office. Pick up your ultimate combat experience fight wear and other mixed martial arts apparel at Against the Fence in the Valley Fair Mall. I want to know how you're feeling right now, Corey. Oh, of course I'm bummed out. You know, you don't come up here and want to lose, but uh, you just got to let it all hang out and Tonight, I think you must have been better prepared or something because it didn't go my way. And that's right. You know what? You said it right there, man. You, you got in here and you fought so dang hard. And I want to tell you, Corey, that uh, that's part of it. You're stepping in here, going those rounds, testing your ability. Now you know you've been, you can make it three. I want to see you get back in here and do it again. What's next for Corey Loftus? I'm going to train hard and come back up and hope it goes my way this time. All right, man. Tonight you were good, my friend, but just not good enough. Is there anyone you need to thank tonight? I need to thank uh, my sponsors, Innovative Trailer and Science Central out of Richfield, and also Kevin Moore, Electric shirt. Company. The whole shirt, it's like oh, a flipping billboard. The whole shirt, and I uh, also need to thank Origin 3. They're an internet company that did the website for our fight team, so. Well, right there, you got a lot of people to thank. It's because you're a great guy. Well, we want to thank you. Uh, Sarah's bringing over your package from all of our sponsors, the Ultimate Combat. Corey, come back and do this again. Oh, yeah, I'll be back for sure. No doubt about it. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. Lima. What's up? This kid's worn out right here. Uh, yeah, I'm worn out from chasing them around all day. <laughs> That's what got you in shape for this fight, didn't it? Yeah, and I still won, barely. You still won barely. That was a tough kid, wasn't it? Hell yeah. That was a lot I'll of fun. Ready next time. That was a lot of fun. That was a fight, really. I mean, I enjoyed that just because you guys, two warriors, came out and did it tonight. Very, very impressive. I'll make sure I'm in better shape next time also. You were in shape tonight. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing here in the winning circle. Yeah. Lima, come do it again, man. Great job tonight. Get this kid to bed. Congratulations. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. 
Thank you for the money. You're very welcome. <laughs> There's only one Lima, my friend. There's only one Lima. I'm excited every time Lima fights, Mike. Uh, you never know what, you're gonna ex what you can expect. Corey Loftus on the other end steps in here, Mike. He's been dominating. It didn't go his way tonight, but Corey, the butcher Loftus, will be back. Johnny, I really, really, really like that Corey Loftus kid. I can't wait to see him come back, but Lima, <laughs> much love. Good job tonight. We got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere.